Hey, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another video. Now today we're looking at my 1993 BMW 318i and uh, Ray's actually joining me today. We're trying to troubleshoot this car because it is cranking but not starting. So we actually spent this morning working on Ray's uh, 328i, doing some stuff to that, but I was getting back to this car. It was actually parked at the top of this hill. It's a pretty steep hill. I don't know how well the camera's gonna pick it up but you're just gonna have to take my word for it. So when I put it uphill, the battery got drained. And I know for a fact with these E36s, they're kind of sensitive when they get to a low battery because of the DME, the central locking. There's a lot of things that are tied up to the car itself when it comes to all the electrics in these old BMWs. So after trying to crank it for maybe like five or six attempts uphill, I tried also cranking it downhill and it still would not start. And the thing is, we were draining the jump back and I felt bad for the starter because it was just constantly cranking over. I didn't get a chance to pull a spark plug yet, so that was what my next assessment was gonna be. But I think the biggest thing right now is just getting the battery fully charged. So I put the battery on a trickle charger. It's holding uh, 12 volts now, checking with the voltmeter. And uh, I don't think I'm gonna bump start it. I, I know that that's a possibility of something I could do too. And for whatever reason, it did not want to fire. And I thought in my head, Oh, well, maybe it's just uphill. It doesn't have enough gas. So I'll roll it back down the hill. We'll get it onto a flat surface and we'll see if the car fires. And of course, cranking, but no start. Now, some ways to go through this. Uh, this may be a good informational video for somebody that has uh, trying to troubleshoot and diagnose a crank no start on an E36. Uh, hopefully we can kind of troubleshoot and figure out what happened here. So the first thing that I did is I went to the relays. There's the main relay and the fuel pump relay. So I just went out and purchased both the main relay and the fuel pump relay. And Ray, do you want to open up those boxes over there? Maybe show the people what the previous ones look like. Now they look very burnt and typically you can kind of see what they look like. And what I actually did is I took some like 80 grit sandpaper and I sanded these down, but they were pretty toast. So I thought this would be 100% the reason that was causing all of this. And again, you can see these and everything on this car is just very old. So you kind of have to put that into consideration. So what I actually did is I took a spark plug out. At least they weren't stuck. Sometimes they get stuck and that is not fun. This one looks a little wet and man, these things are old. You can tell they've been there forever. And then I took off a spark plug wire. And what I did is, uh, this is kind of like an old school mechanic trick. So what you can do is you can take a screwdriver like this and you can crank the car and you use this screwdriver and you arc it against uh, somewhere either on the body or on the engine and see if there will be any arcing or any electricity sparking onto the car. So that will give you an indication that the car has spark. In this case, it does not. There's no spark in sight. So that kind of minimizes what's going on, right? Or that's what you would think. So we replaced the relays, we did that, we see that there's no spark. Now, another thing that I'm starting to think is the, something called the fusible link. So the fusible link is in the trunk. So now when we go to the trunk of the car, and uh, <laughs> Ray, I actually might need your help on this one. Because the, the liners in these trunks, I mean, why are they so strong? Very robust. No, I know, right? And uh, excuse the mess for anybody that's uh, seen that on the side. And if it's fighting you too much, it's, it's not too big of a deal. So when we make our way way back here, you see how there's this secondary wire that's running here? There's actually a fuse over here. And what you can do is you can test for resistance. So I tested this one for continuity and it has continuity and it has 0.003 of uh, ohms of resistance. Or sorry, 0 0.03 ohms of resistance. So that actually tells us that that is good. And the way that you test the ohms of resistance is you actually have the battery unplugged. No, don't worry about that. I just had to go and recharge the, the, the battery itself. We did all that. And then the next thing that I did, and Ray helped me with this one also, is we took the back seat out. Okay, so we took the back seat out, which is very easy to do in these E36s, thank God, because some cars, it could be just a horrible, horrible nightmare. Yeah, and if you want to peel that back for us. Now, this is the fuel pump, okay? So if you take off all those little Phillips screws, you remove those, it will give you access to the fuel pump. But the thing is, uh, we don't hear the fuel pump turning on. 
So I'm suspecting to believe now that it could be the fuel pump is bad. Which is so concerning, so confusing. All of this is just kind of giving me a headache and I'll probably have to kind of sleep on it to put all this stuff together. Oh, thanks, Ray. I really appreciate you helping me with all this anyways. <laughs> so I'm suspecting that it's either going to be the fuel pump has gone bad because when we think about it, when a car is parked up on a hill so far away up, it has to work extra hard because gravity is going against it. And maybe it was just enough for it to finally crap out. And it just, they just said no more, no more fuel pump, right? This is the original cam position sensor. Now this one, you can tell just by the orientation of it, it's, it's so crusty and old. It's been sitting there for a long time. And these cars, specifically the four cylinders, they have two sensors total. So you have a cam position sensor, and then you have a crank position sensor. Now I replaced the cam position sensor because it's very easy to take off. And the crank position sensor, unfortunately I don't have it today, or else we could do it also. And it's, it's uh, relatively simple. I don't even think I need to jack up the car. Maybe you, maybe somebody out there in the comments knows. I'm kind of going through the process of uh, trying everything and seeing what works and see what doesn't. But we're kind of both just left scratching our heads, right? Yeah, I don't know. Hey guys, just wanted to give you a quick update here. And I actually replaced the crank position sensor, tried turning it over, and I got the same exact result as I did earlier. So that wasn't the culprit, which is very frustrating. And I am kind of running out of things to replace, except for the computer. Now with these E36s, they call them the DME. I forgot what the abbreviation stands for, and I'm sure somebody in the comments will be able to correct me here, but I just noticed when I pulled this out that I see on the bottom of the tray where the DME lives is there's moisture. So I'm willing to bet that moisture got into the computer and probably cooked it. And I also see here, that I don't know if you're gonna be able to tell, but this almost looks like uh, something getting hot or burnt on the edges of it. I haven't actually taken the plug off myself and I'm looking at the wiring harness itself to see if there's any splits in any wires and I don't see anything and it looks like nobody's really tampered with this. I mean, the, the car is 100% stock. So I think a common thing that actually happens on these E36s and I actually see, look at, you see this? There's a hole. So from the, the windshield cowl down, I think what happened is because it rains here so much is that this little hole was just an entryway for moisture to get in. And I think it was enough to fry the computer. So if I was gonna hedge my bets, I'm willing to bet that the DME is no good. So I've actually talked to a couple BMW specialists today to see if I could find a used DME today. But luckily they're pretty cheap and I even found some on eBay for like 70 bucks. So I might even go that route as well. But I'm just trying to get this thing running because I really miss driving this car. All right, guys, so it's been a couple days later and I actually was able to source a used DME. Now I was able to get this off of eBay for like 70 bucks. I'm going to take some time and just clean up this area to make sure that there's no further moisture. And it's actually been like a rainstorm over here. It's been pouring rain pretty hard the past couple days. Um, but the good news is since the car is on flat ground, I actually don't see any water getting into here, but I want to make sure that I plug that up as good as possible because I really don't want to go through this all over again. And I'm really hoping that the car will be reliable after I do this fix. So fingers crossed that this is the solution. First startup, I'm shaking. I'm so nervous, dude. That looks promising. Come on, stay idle, stay idle. Oh yeah, baby, oh yeah. <laughs> what a mess, but uh, anyways, hope that helps some people with troubleshooting your E36. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.